Hello, my name is Matt Street and I'm the Retail Operations Lead at ArcherPoint. Today we're going to explore rapidly setting up items with color size attributes. We're going to build these items from a subscription that we, we found of data of vendor information. Uh, first, let us establish what, what it is that we'd want to track at the color size level. Obviously, what we sell to our customers, we'd like to identify what sizes and colors we sold, uh, what quantity on hand we have at each store and in our warehouse, uh, the barcodes that are associated with those, those individual color size items, uh, the cost from the vendor, uh, because we know that some colors and sizes may cost different than others, prices to the customer, and also replenishment rules. What sizes and colors uh, do we want to stock more of or less of at each of our individual stores? There's a lot of retail systems out there that have the features and functions necessary to track these items that we just identified. But that's usually not the issue when it comes to, to tracking information at this level. Uh, usually it's the amount of setup and data entry that makes tracking items at a color size level painful to a lot of retailers. At ArcherPoint, we concentrate on making client processes successful rather than just showing them the features and functions of the software. So we look for a way to make this process of setting up and maintaining items with color size attributes quick and easy. So let's start our demonstration of how to set up items with color size. We'll start by launching our ERP system, our retail system, which is Microsoft Dynamics NAV 2013 with LS Retail. We mentioned before that we had a subscription service of item information with color size uh, from, from a data source. And how we go about bringing that in is to what we call this holding area. And I'll get this started and explain a little bit more about that. We're gonna type in an effective date for pricing purposes, because we can also bring this information in uh, to update items with their prices. And then we'll select the file that was sent to us. This subscription, I believe, comes on a monthly basis. And it will take just a little bit. So let's take a look at the actual data file. I have an open copy of it here. Um, you can see it's, it's a lot of data. It is 162,000 records of individual SKUs with all their color size information, descriptions, classifications, the vendor that it comes from, et cetera. We bring it into this, this holding area, and, and we'll talk a little bit while it's still working. We bring it into this, this holding area for a couple of reasons. One, it's, it's not, um, not our philosophy to have data from an external source come in to our ERP system and affect the, the real items. For example, we don't want items created that, that we didn't intend to create. Uh, so we're bringing it into a holding area where we can uh, manipulate it, search, change it, etc. before we really turn it into uh, an item in our system that will sell to our customers. The second reason is that we may have different forms of information that we want to bring in. So bringing it into a common holding area allows us to, to take multiple different files that may differ slightly, for example, have different fields in them, uh, different columns, uh, maybe have slightly different meanings for certain fields uh, and allows us to bring it into a custom place. So from this point on, it doesn't matter what data source we got it from as long as we were building this information and we mapped its data to this. So you can see that we have our 162,000 records that we imported into here. At this time, I'd like to be focused on getting in an item into our system, ready to be sold, ready to be purchased. So we're gonna we're gonna go through and look for a particular item. We're looking for a particular item that was from the Cherokee vendor code, and we are going to uh, look for a particular style 1067, which should be in the pant 
category. You can see that we have all these style 106.7s with their different color size values. You can see that pricing changes uh, depending on some of the size values, some of the plus sizes. You can see that we have different UPC codes, color descriptions, we're bringing in the detailed descriptions, etc. So we can we can look at this information. Uh, it's all part of the same group because we selected just that. Select that and tell it that we want to convert this raw data that we got from the vendor into our next step, which is our vendor catalog or what we call a vendor item library. So we'll look at this vendor item library record. Uh, you can see that we have uh, information about the item. Uh, a lot of this was defaulted from the product group code that was associated with the pant type that we had in the raw data. And then we have all our detailed options in a structured form, along with the data of all the options, all the color sizes, it brought in and structured the unit costs and unit prices, and references, and so on. And from here, we can take the final step and say that we want an item generated for this. So in this case, we have a lot of options. Most of these default, again, from the product group that we associated with the type of goods that the vendor told us was a pant. We'll say OK here. Um, now you can see the difference between a vendor item library record that uh, has an item associated with it. Notice that these are grayed out. I can no longer change them because if I want to change these values, I need to do that on the item itself. So this is our item card. This is where the item becomes a real item that we can sell on our POS or on our website or through a sales order. This is the base level information about the item. Uh, what you would particularly say is, is associated with the style. This is what controls all the color sizes. In other words, gives them their defaults, right? So, so this item can be analyzed at the style level and we can track things at the color size level, which in our system we call variance. So if we look at a few of these and look at the purchase prices, which came from our file, which would be the price that we would pay the vendor for this particular color size within this style. We have all our 81 variants, uh, nine colors, nine sizes here. And notice that the price is changing depending on uh, mostly size, 4X and 5X are, are uh, cost a little bit more than the 2X and 3X, which cost a little more than the large, medium, and smalls. So those would be our purchase prices. We could also look at our sales prices, and these would be our suggested retail prices. Uh, the subscription service has uh, uh, the ability to do some calculations uh, with this. So you can, you can do profit margin pricing or calculated unit prices based on uh, the cost plus uh, a profit percentage and so on, a couple of other methods. So that, that you aren't stuck with the price that, that the manufacturer gives. You can do some massaging to that based on your preferences and pricing mechanisms. So this is the prices again, all 81 variants, different prices for uh, the 4X and 5X and within the deep, different colors. We could also look at a list of our barcodes. So this would be all the barcodes uh, in order and what color size they represent. Very similar to that is this information in the, the, in the variant framework. Uh, this has a little bit of additional information, uh, but I think the key here is, is that our one little button on the vendor item library set up all this information for us based on the information that came from the file. So here we have this column called valid. So if we bring in this information uh, and you, you brought all the color sizes into an item 
And at some point in time, or maybe initially you decide that you're not going to be selling certain colors or certain sizes, you can just uncheck these boxes and then they will no longer be treated as sellable items or purchasable items. But you could always come back and turn them back on. Uh, we also have these things called dimensional weight. Uh, the dimension that this is referring to is the variant dimension, which dimension one is color and dimension two is size. So we can actually specify weights that we want to give the various colors and sizes. So when we're ordering in bulk, it will allocate and recommend which, um, what quantities you should buy of each color size based on these weights. Of course, you can always change them. It's just a starting place. So the other thing I want to show that we set up with the one little button on the vendor item library creation uh, is this replenishment information. In this case, we have about 26 different location codes defined, uh, plus the 81, um, 81 different variants within this one item. So you can take 26 times 81, and that's how many records would be you would be looking at here. Uh, it allows you to essentially have a grid of each combination and set the reorder points and maximum inventory uh, points for each one of those. And this data is actually dependent on what you chose here. And I'm showing the most basic level of replenishment that we do. Uh, we can do manual estimates, we can uh, analyze average usage and, and recommend uh, quantities to, to replenish with. Uh, we can do like for like, which says for every one you sell, we'll replace it. Or we can use demand plan, which is an advanced forecasting system uh, that does its plan outside the system and then brings it back in to this to, uh, to give you a little more uh, advanced statistics on how you're doing replenishment. So, but the key here is that we set up the structure and we can change things based on any combination of variant. Uh, it's, it's not likely that you're gonna stock the same number of, of uh, each color and each size in each store. Uh, we, have, we have clients that they do that at the store color size level and every value can be can be different. So by allowing them just to change, to at least set up the initial structure for it and just change the values uh, that we would like these to be in any way that you want, we can, we can give them uh, a leg up on the data entry for this. This can also be uh, copied out into Excel and they can use uh, a standard Excel spreadsheet to change all these values or in fact any of this information and then paste it right back in. So now that we've seen our item and we've seen what was set up from the the one button that we that we pushed on the vendor item library record, uh, let's go and see what we can do with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new purchase order for this item. We have one vendor in our system. So we'll set this up. We'll put in our single item that we have generated in the system. That information comes back. And now pay attention closely when we type in the quantity here. As soon as I tab off that field, it's gonna bring me up a matrix and you can see all nine colors across the top, all nine sizes down the side. And if I want to make adjustments, I can say that we need a few more of, of these in these sizes and in all these colors. And the same thing for down here with the mediums. We can do that and it will automatically adjust our
quantity up here. If we needed to get back to 200 for budgetary concerns, we could subtract out some items there. So it's doing its little calculation. And now we see that we're going to be ordering 228 of this style. And if we want to see the breakdown of color size, we can always bring up this, this matrix and, and adjust it. So just so we get some inventory into our system to, uh, to sell, we'll go ahead and post this. And normally you may receive an invoice independently of one another, but for convenience, we'll just do everything at once and pretend. So it's posting each of the 81 lines, even though it looks like one line here, it's really 81 lines behind the scenes that it's working with. So our purchase order, purchase order is now posted. We can go back, just take a look at this item and see if there's anything different about it. And yes, we now have 228 on hand. Uh, we can go and look at our quantities and the retail availability by variant. And that will show us that we currently have two on hand, zero on order, and two available to sell. If we want to see where those are, where those two items are stocked at, we can come and look at all our various locations and see that we have two in store one. Okay. So our next step is to see if we can sell this item. We could sell it through a sales order, uh, through our e-commerce site, or we could sell it through our POS. So for this demonstration, we'll, we'll use our POS. Log on with our staff ID. And we'll paste in our various barcodes here. So here we're bringing up the, the large royal billet. We'll scan in this barcode and we'll see that this is a 2X and it has a different price than the, the large did, same style. And finally, we'll put in a 4X item and see yet again that the price is different. So we've sold three of our items. We'll go ahead and total this, pay cash, say OK. Let it post. We can see a virtual copy of the receipt over here. And we'll log off our POS. And go back and look to see what's happened to our item now. And we were at 228, we've sold three, and now we're at 225. So that's the end of today's demonstration. Uh, it was just meant to show how quickly we could set up an item with uh, a rather large amount of variance. And uh, we could have used our, our data file from our vendor and set up many more. Uh, we could have created the vendor item library uh, with with hundreds of items all at one time, and then got into the vendor item library and created items with all their variants, all the prices that came from, from that library data, uh, set up the re replenishment data, costs, barcodes, etc. So I hope that uh, was informative on, on a way to, to set up these items using our system, and thank you for listening.